We're working with the periodic table. If we take a look at the periodic table, uh, it has changed from the very beginning, from the very first one. We've added elements, so when we ever take a look at a periodic table, uh, not every periodic table is going to look exactly like different manufacturers design it a little bit differently and depending upon the age of the periodic table that of course will have a huge effect on what it looks like as well so that being said let's take a look at the periodic table right here well this right here is we're going to take a look at you'll notice that there's this little black line right here on your periodic table this is called the stair step everything to the left everything to the left the orange here all these are metals okay we'll talk about the properties of metals uh, at a later time you know but for the most part the well let's talk it now metals of course things like they're shiny they conduct electricity very well they're malleable in other words you can bend them easily on the other hand these in the, in the right of the stair step are non-metals these are usually uh, more earthy uh, dull in color and uh, uh, shininess or lack of shininess and they're brittle okay and they usually don't conduct electricity very well then we have the metalloids now here's another periodic table the metalloids these are these guys right here boron silicon etc these are on either side of that black stair step that we showed you now, metalloids have properties of both metals and non-metals, okay? So, for example, um, silicon. Silicon is found in computer chips and semiconductors. So, it's very brittle, like a non-metal, and it can, um, it's like I said, it's used in semiconductors and electricity, so it has some of the properties of metals. Take a look at the periodic table. You'll notice a lot of times you'll have a bunch of numbers. Now, periods, periods represent the rows, okay, going from side to side. And there are seven different periods. Then we have this right here. These, oops, these are called groups or families. This is going down one, two, three, and there's one all the way over to 18. There are 18 groups. They're also known as families. Now, if we take a look at a family, say your family. Now, your family uh, probably has some characteristics that are similar throughout. Now, your family is probably not identical, you know, everyone being the same, but they have something. Like maybe a, it's a, uh, a the temper, or maybe it's... Uh, a weird birthmark. Who knows whatever it is. But it's something. So like for example, it's here. Um, group 1 here. Group 1 here, we take a look at hydrogen. If you look at hydrogen, has an atomic mass of 1. And potassium has an atomic mass of like 39. Now, very different in size, but they're in the same family. And because of that, they have some certain characteristics that are very similar to one another. And it happens, families have similar similar chemical property characteristics. For example, group one. Group one is very reactive, right? It's the most reactive. And on the other side here, group 18, group 18 here is the least reactive. Well, just like any family, families have specific you know, names to help identify them. And what we're going to concentrate today is talking about the exact type of and names of some of these families. The first one we're going to talk about is these right here, the alkali metal. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say it. I want you to repeat it after me. And then because if you look at it, you say it, and you hear it, you learn it a lot faster. So these guys right here in that group number one are known as the alkali metals. All right? The alkali. I get really twangy there. Group number two. Group two, number two are known as the alkali earth metals. All right, you try now. Alkali earth metals. Yeah, you got to get from the base. All right, got to get, get it there. 
Alkali Earth Metals. So that's group number two. Group number one, remember, are the Alkali Metals. Group number two are the Alkali Earth Metals. Now, groups three through 12, all right? Groups three through 12 here, that lower section, these are known as the transitional metals, all right? The transitional metals. Then, if we take a look at these groups, the boron group, Carbon family, nitrogen family, oxygen family, that's just names of the first element of the group. They're boring. So, but group 17. Now, group 17, these are known as the halogens. All right, so group 17 are the, that's right, they're the halogens. All right, then we have the last group, group 18. Now, group 18, these are the least reactive, okay? They uh, very rarely will you find them combined with any of their compound. And it does happen, but very rarely. They're very, they're very snooty. Like, they're like royalty. Like, they don't want to deal with anything else. They just go on be by themselves. So we call them the, I'll pinch your nose now, noble gases. That's right. So we take a look at the periodic table here. The group one here is known as the, Alkali metals. Group number two are the alkali earth metals. Group three through 12 are known as the transitional metals. Group 17 right here are known as the halogens. And group 18 are known as the noble gases. Well, then we take a look at these guys down here. These that are kind of pulled out from the rest of the periodic table. These are known as the rare earth metals, all right? So the rare earth metals, uh, also known as the intertransitionals, uh, are this block of elements brought out from the rest of the periodic table. Now there are a couple, now if we take these rare earth metals, this top row is also known as the lathanide series. So part of the rare earth metals can be subdivided into the lathanide series. And then the bottom row of these are called the actinide series. Okay, so that right there are the families of the periodic table.